Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have a concept for launching very large things on NASA's Space Launch System that I would like to float to you viewers on YouTube so that you can give me feedback before I make parts to make it look nicer and actually work. Uh, and that is because previously, especially with the Starship Depot, uh, people brought up very good points about uh, the issues with it and I had wished that I had not made the parts already uh, or actually in that case Pekka had also made some parts though that part was not too bad uh, but anyway here is the idea and you can tell me why it might not be a good idea so the idea is that Space Launch System SLS has actually a unique capability in that most of the Delta V to get to low Earth orbit is in a very very long tank uh, this this tank here, right? The other stages that are placed on top of it, ICPS or EUS, are mainly to push the payload to the moon. Uh, otherwise, they complete orbit. They do a little bit of work to complete orbit, but mostly it's the core plus the boosters. And the core is extremely long and open-ended, unlike Starship, right? Starship has a very definite shape at the top, but in theory, SLS could have a fairing of any shape. In particular, I'm thinking of a shape that will cover up these hinges. Uh, so uh, the, the idea is that you will hang uh, arms, lever arms, uh, uh, maybe crew access arms, uh, on down the side of SLS and have docking ports at the end so that other modules can be docked to it. And what this would allow for is artificial gravity. Right, because you need a huge structure to have artificial gravity because to do artificial gravity you rotate the huge thing around and the wider it is, the less you have to rotate it to generate the gravity that you want. And there's a limit to how much human beings can deal with as far as something rotating. If, so if you make it too small, if you make it so that it has to rotate more than six rotations per minute, that's horrible. Uh, the general consensus is that two rotations per minute is okay, but still, to generate Earth gravity at two rotations per minute, you need something more than 100 meters long. So, and normally I, I don't have the exact numbers in my head because normally I'm trying to generate Mars gravity rather than Earth gravity. So, but the idea is that you need something really big in order to generate the artificial gravity by rotation. And so this is a way to deal with that because now we can create a structure that is 100 meters long because, uh, well, two arms like this uh, will create, well, I mean, uh, it's 100 meters, but it's not 100 meters to the center though. Uh, so the lever arm is less than 100 meters. But anyway, it's pretty darn good. And uh, it, it gives us an opportunity to do this without having to construct the thing in orbit. You can do it all in one launch. Well, not the habitat modules. Those will be launched separately. But you can create the truss in one launch, which is helpful. And I think you could also, and it might not be just a truss. It could be actually a crew access tube. So crew could go through it. Though then we've got the hinge problem, though that's where me making special parts comes in. So the crew access tube, I'm thinking, will probably wrap around that. And I'll have to make that happen somehow. And I also have to do the custom fairing, probably the ion engine. This is an ion engine module. So at the center, we have ion engines pushing this whole thing as it rotates. And I think I want a reactor. I don't want the solar panels. Though there's plenty of truss for solar. If we wanted to put solar panels, we could put solar panels all along the truss and everything. So this is the idea. And ultimately you have a very wide thing like that spinning around but when it's folded up it's just braced on the side of SLS it will be on the side of the fuel lines but I think we can have a little brace around the fuel lines to keep it steady and the but the load the weight is still at the top so that shouldn't be a problem it's not like it's carrying extra loads on the side or anything I don't really see any problem with this. Uh, so it's just a matter of making special parts like custom fairing, which I'm sure 
that's what we love to do, or it would cost an uh, obscene amount of money. The thing is, I don't think any other launcher has this capability to launch something like this by hanging it down the side, right? Because it, with uh, Starship, you can only hang it down the length of Starship anyway, but it also doesn't have an open top. So even though it's fairly large, it's not quite as long as the first stage of SLS. And it doesn't really accommodate the fact that you can stretch something down because it doesn't have fairings like that. And nothing else is quite as big as SLS. So SLS is sort of unique in this particular capability, which is very particular uh, for a very particular purpose. But it's a purpose that I think we need to do at some point. We need to launch something that can generate artificial gravity so we can see how people deal with that. I mean, uh, will it be good enough to allow them to retain their bone structure and muscle mass in their legs and stuff like that? And can they work in that environment with it rotating, generating artificial gravity? We've never tested that. It's been in countless sci-fi stuff, but we've never tested the thing where, I mean, they, they did a brief test with uh, Tether in Gemini, but that wasn't a very good test because the Tether wasn't taut. Uh, it was sort of uh, affected by the gravity gradient of Earth, right? Because if you orient things in a certain way around Earth, and you spin them, the gravity on one end will be a little bit different than the gravity at the other end. And so that affects a tether uh, because it's not rigid. And so they didn't have a very good time testing it with Gemini. But I think we need to sort of test the whole idea of generating artificial gravity somehow in space so that people don't have to constantly deal with bone loss and muscle mass loss and all this business. And of course it presents a different kind of working environment. And along the length of it, there's different working environments because there's not gonna be as much gravity or uh, it's basically gonna be in free fall at the center. The gravity is gonna be different along this tube. The gravity is only going to be the specified amount at the end. So, there's a lot of science to be done like this, and especially science regarding the human body's reactions to outer space and different gravity, but we haven't done any of that. So the other objection to this would be, well, you can just assemble it, right? And I think that has merit, but it is also very difficult to just assemble it in orbit, but this might be more difficult. I don't know which would be worse, especially if crew can travel through this, if it's a tube. Uh, if you have to assemble a tube, then that has to, I mean, the joints have to be very nice. Whereas if it's all one, effectively launched as one piece, maybe it'll be lighter like that. So I'm hoping that it would be lighter like that in this sort of scenario, but maybe this is just a cr contrivance for making it easier in Kerbal Space Program so I don't have to dock everything all over the place. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's other uses of this that I'm not thinking of as well. But it's just the fact that SLS allows for this capability in theory that has me intrigued. Just hang the thing off the side of it. I mean, you don't normally see that, is sort of the point. You don't normally see the payload just sort of hanging off to the side instead of all tucked away in the payload fairing. Maybe there are other use cases for this particular concept and it could be helpful. At least, at least it can be helpful for me in Kerbal Space Program so I don't have to dock a hundred trusses together in order to make it work out. Uh, we can take advantage of this sort of deal. Also, I don't know if people generally do this. Maybe maybe people have been doing this a lot already, and I just don't know. So anyway, I'll get your thoughts, but once I do, I'll probably start making the parts so that I can make such a thing and make it into a spacefaring vessel. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.